Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, guys. I am here to do a late video in the evening of Shabbat. Uh, I hope you guys are having a wonderful Shabbat. Uh, I am going to be getting into some news today. A little bit of news, Israel news, uh, and some things going on. Um, I'm going to be doing some uh, Israel news. Uh, I'm going to be getting into uh, a particular person today. I'm going to be bringing up Charles Whelan. Uh, you know, when he talked about some things in prophecy dealing with uh, the Trump situation and things going on in the news right now, all the things are escalating. I'm going to be showing part one and two, but only a portion of part one, like an intro, and then get into part two and play it for 30 minutes. Uh, but I will put the links in the description box if you guys never got to watch those two videos. Uh, just really funny because he talked about this about seven years ago. Uh, so, and um, now, I mean, sometimes he do videos, man, and it don't happen when he's talking about it going to happen, but it happened later uh, or whatever. But he's, he have it in, um, he have always talked about this stuff going on right now. I'm going to be getting into Pastor Dowell. He's going to have a, a message to talk about the shooting uh, in Tennessee area. I know he lives in Tennessee area. So I thought I would put him on today to show you guys, uh, give an idea what he's talking about, the situation with the shooting there in ten Tennessee. Uh, I'm going to get into Lewis in Florida a little bit. We're going to do missions from uh, the missionaries uh, from in time dream and visions um bob barbara uh and also we're gonna do here the bible always doing the bible uh gonna get into the bible isaiah 55 chapter today uh i don't even know i haven't looked at isaiah 55 in a long time but uh it came to my mind today because you know we got to understand as i told you on my last video uh what happened to me you know i could have died i could i didn't know what was wrong with me uh the pain was so tremendous so horrendous and God just uh, touched me and healed me because I wrestled with him. And I told him, Father, you are the doctor. You are the great physician. Uh, and, you know, you, you God all by yourself. I don't need nobody to do nothing for me but you. And he healed me. And so this is why I'm going into Isaiah 55 because he's talking about come, uh, eat, uh, buy, you know. And everything will be free of charge. And heaven going to be free of charge. And we need to know salvation is free of charge. Uh, it's time to give your life to Messiah Yeshua. Uh, time is running out. And then we're going to get into some other news things on the news as well. Uh, I'm not going to go over everybody, but uh, I am going to get into uh, Charles and Pastor Dow and Dutch Sense. Dutch Sense report uh, from a day or so ago is very important, the end part of it. So I'm going to be just playing about 11 minutes of it or so, but... Uh, we know all these quakes are coming and everything's happening all over the land. All the signs are showing. Uh, so let's get started and do a song coming from Mia. Uh, her songs are wonderful. I love her songs. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to get into uh, the screen here in front of you. Download Jean's free EPUB Bible. Uh, read the Son of Man Bible PDF for free. Download the Son of Man Bible for free. Download free at BibleSupport.com, WordModulars.com. Uh, click subscribe to like bell. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the like button. Click the notification bell. Uh, fair use notice. Uh, and also disclaimer in front of you. And FBI notice. And you know, guys, I always uh, send my emails out to you. If you want to get on my email list, you can always write me and get on my email list. Because I send a lot of the videos out to you personally, myself, because I know sometimes YouTube do not put the videos out. So I always try to do that on my own time. So uh, if you want to get on my email list, just write me, marnie.calman at gmail.com, and I will put you on my email list. I know there's a lot going on, guys. There's so much going on. So we need to be talking to our Savior, really checking him out, really seeking him really tugging on him, tugging on him like a little child, daddy, 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 uh, what's in my life missing, can you help me, can you save me, can you heal me, because soon and very soon, we're not going to have no one to call on but him, they got a lot of things going on in the Middle East right now, uh, a lot of uh, things coming as we're going prior to Passover, so we need to be not dis be deceived, uh, Colorado got some changes going on, I will probably bring that out in the video later, 
but we, we, it's just a lot of laws being changed already right before your eyes. So we need to know Yeshua HaMashiach, our God Almighty, do not change. That's the wonderful thing about him. He do not change. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this song now and get started. Let me go ahead and mute it out. Okay, I didn't even set it up here. Mute it out.
TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Syria blames Israel for a second aerial strike on an Iranian target in the vicinity of Damascus in less than 24 hours in which at least one RGC officer has been killed and which consequently drew pledges by the Islamic Republic to enact revenge. Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen thanks Greece for the proactive activity of its National Intelligence Agency, which in a coordinated effort with the Israeli Mossad Agency foiled an Iranian attack against an Israeli target in Athens. The International Nobel Dina Maritime Exercise, which included the Israeli, American, French, Greek, Italian and Cypriot navies, concluded after two weeks of extensive maneuvers. Unidentified aircraft launched a salvo of missiles targeting an Iranian installation in the vicinity of Damascus in a second such strike which Syria blamed Israel for in less than 24 hours. According to the Syrian military, the attack occurred roughly 15 minutes after midnight when bursts of missiles from the direction of the Golan Heights targeted a site in Damascus countryside. The incoming projectiles evidently penetrated Syria's aerial defense systems, which were triggered, and the Syrian Arab army noted that some material losses were caused. Separately, in Tehran, the regime-controlled Tasnim news agency published a statement by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, in which it announced that one of its officers, who operated in Syria under the guise of a so-called military advisor, was killed in the attack which Tehran, similarly to Damascus, attributed to Israel. And while Iran's Revolutionary Guards voiced outrage over the silence and inaction by the international community over Israel's alleged violations of Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity, the IRGC pledged to enact revenge against what it referred to as the fake and criminal Zionist regime. Meanwhile, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny its alleged involvement in response to TV7's request for comment. Turning to Washington, where Pentagon spokesman Brigadier General Pat Ryder highlighted that the United States Central Command has taken and, as necessary, will continue to take military action against the RGC and its affiliates. In light of limited responses by the United States in a declared bid to prevent escalation that could lead to conflict or war with Iran, the top security leadership of the Pentagon and U.S. military faced rebuke by both the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives. Consequently, amid rising domestic pressure, Washington is evidently planning to ratchet up its military responses to face a pattern of Iranian and Iran-backed attacks against U.S. personnel and facilities in Iraq and Syria and the continuing threat of future such attacks. As Secretary Austin made clear during his contest congressional testimony this week, we will take all necessary measures to defend our troops and our interests overseas. To underscore, in response to a pattern of Iranian and Iran-backed attacks against U.S. personnel and facilities in Iraq and Syria and the continuing threat of future such attacks, the United States has taken and, as necessary, will continue to take military action against the IRGC and its affiliates. This includes the use of force against IRGC and IRGC affiliate personnel and facilities and the U.S. Central Command Area of Responsibility with the intention to convince the Iranians to de-escalate threats against the United States, our interests, and our people. Again, we do not seek conflict with Iran, but we will always protect our people. The Pentagon press secretary further revealed that medical tests following the two Iranian-directed strikes on U.S. bases in Syria have identified six additional U.S. service members who sustained traumatic brain injury. In addition to the, the seven uh, injured service members that I highlighted. Uh, there were an additional six U.S. service members that have subsequently been diagnosed with traumatic brain injury uh, as a result of the Iranian back attacks, uh, specifically four U.S. Ser service members uh, at the coalition base near Hasaka uh, during the March 23rd attack and two at mission support site uh, Green Village uh, on the March 24 attack. 
uh, in a standard procedure, all, all personnel in the vicinity of a blast are screened for uh, traumatic brain injuries. So these additional injuries were identified during post-attack medical screenings. As TV7 broadcast on March 24th, citing corroborated reports, General Ryder similarly noted that the latest American strike, which targeted RGC infrastructure in the vicinity of Der Ezov, killed at least eight militants, which operated in Syria on Iran's behalf. First, we now assess that eight militants were killed in our strikes against two IRGC Quds Force facilities near Dar Azur by U.S. Air Force F-15E fighters assigned to U.S. Air Forces Central. Again, these precision strikes were taken to protect and defend U.S. personnel. Second, the six U.S. personnel wounded in the March 23rd attack against a coalition base near Hasaka in northeastern Syria are all in stable condition. Turning to Greece were two suspects who were part of a cell which planned to carry out an Iranian-orchestrated attack against an Israeli target, appeared before an investigating magistrate this morning at the central courthouse in Athens. The two suspects, who were identified as Pakistani nationals, were arrested on Tuesday in an operation carried out by the Greek counter-terror security agency based on information jointly collected by the Greek National Intelligence Service and the Israeli Mossad. According to a police official, the Iranian terror cell aimed to target an Israeli restaurant in central Athens in the popular tourist district of Psiri. Meanwhile, during a trilateral summit in Cyprus, which included the top diplomats of Nicosia, Athens and Jerusalem, Foreign Minister Eli Cohen voiced Israel's appreciation of the deep cooperation between the Greek and Israeli intelligence services. This week, we got another reminder of the terrorist ways of Iran in Athens. Israel, we live and grateful to Greek intelligence and security services that succeeded in preventing the terrorist attack against Jewish and Israel targets. Thank you. This cooperation between our intelligence agency will remain. Minister Cohen further highlighted the need to confront the Islamic Republic of Iran and according to foreign ministry sources, urged his Greek and Cypriot counterparts to work to advance the designation of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps as a terrorist organization within the European Union. Terrorism is a common enemy and we fight against it. It's our top priority. The government of the Ayatollahs in Tehran export terrorism to the Middle East and to entire world. Iran is the number one worldwide who finance uh, terror. The Iranian regime is no longer just a regional problem, but a European and a global one as well. Foreign Minister Cohen, who prior to his address partook in an extensive session of discussions on matters of joint interest as part of the trilateral Israeli-Greek-Cypriot Forum, further highlighted Jerusalem's deep appreciation of the strategic alliance with Athens and Nicosia. This trilateral cooperation is important for us and we are determined to promote it in various strategic and economic fields. The ability to hold on joint consultation and share insight, as well as promoting beneficial trilateral agenda, serves the interest of all of us, strengthening all of us and help in stabilizing the region. Israel also welcomed the deep defense cooperation between our countries. As a friends, we are willing to share our know-how, our capabilities, and support further strengthening of this field by joint military exercise and procurement. It is important to know that a day prior to the trilateral summit in Cyprus, the international noble Dina naval exercise that was led by the Israeli Navy and included the participation of the U.S., French, Greek, Italian, and Cypriot navies, concluded following two weeks of joint maritime maneuvers. Four missile ships of the Israeli Navy participated in the exercise, including two Sal 4.5-class missile boats, a Sal 5-class corvette, and for the first time since receiving the vessels from Germany, 
a Style 6 class Corvette also participated in the international exercise. <laughs> The participating forces performed a series of varying drills, including complex underwater combat drills against submarines, joint maritime combat, handling of aerial and naval threats, and handling a mass casualty incident, among others. According to the IDF, the conclusion of the International Noble Dina Naval Exercise marks a significant step in strengthening international cooperation in the region in order to ensure freedom of navigation and maintain maritime security. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. If you're blessed by our productions and would like help support TV7 Israel's ongoing operations, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, we would like to continue encouraging you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again on Monday at the same time. News report today. Today is April 1st, 2023, 1 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. In breaking news, executives at Austal, which bills the LCSs for the U.S. Navy, have all been indicted for fraud. Montgomery, Alabama, three current and former executives of a shipbuilder that constructs vessels for the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard have been indicted on accounting fraud charges, accusing them of falsely inflating the company's reported earnings, federal prosecutors said. Craig Perciaval, 52, Joseph Runkle, 54, and William Adams, 63, all of Mobile, Alabama, where Austral USA LLC is based, are accused of misleading shareholders and investors. They are each charged with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and wire fraud affecting a financial institution, five counts of wire fraud, and two counts of wire fraud affecting a financial institution, the U.S. Department of Justice said in a news release Friday. Austal Limited is actually an Australian-based global shipbuilding company but this is an American branch out of Alabama. The company's total market cap is only $625 million. You would think that just one ship would cost a lot more than that. Very, very strange. Trading at $1.72 currently. God bless you and yours, folks. and God bless every single one of you. Today is March 31st, 2023, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. All right, guys, so we have some breaking news updates, some very important information coming out. A tornado emergency has been issued for an extremely large and violent tornado on the ground. 
Now, this is happening in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, the National Weather Service has issued a tornado emergency for northwest Little Rock towns like Sherwood and Jacksonville, Arkansas. Now, it says, should improve, take shelter. This is a life threatening situation as a confirmed and extremely large damaging tornado is on the ground doing catastrophic damage guys let me just show you this video really quick this is what's going on right now that's what's going on right now there is a shelter in place once again look at this one that is huge. Now it says here, new incredible yet terrifying footage of a violent tornado that has passed through near Little Rock, Arkansas, reports of significant damage to multiple homes and buildings in Jacksonville, uh, Arkansas. Tornado emergency has been expanded. Before I start, guys, give this video Yeah, guys, you know, you heard about the tornado there. It was so horrible from the news yesterday evening. We were watching it. Uh, just want to come here and update you for those of who you didn't know about it. So um, I just thought I would put it on anyway. But I'm telling you, we praying for uh, Arkansas. I talked to one of my pastor friends there. They're doing okay, safe and everything. But uh, let's get started with some other news uh, and then I will get into uh, next. I'm gonna be doing um, Dutch Sense uh, uh, report, and then we're gonna get into uh, Charles Whelan because I gotta show some things there in two parts a little bit. But I'm telling you guys, these things are happening, and we need to be getting prepared, staying prepared, being prepared. Uh, before I get into the other news, I'm gonna bring this up real quick since I got it on the screen. Colorado governor bans the short-term rentals statewide. And I have uh, copied it off because I didn't, I mean, you go to the other link there. I don't know who that company is. So for, public, uh, for copyright sakes, I'm gonna, I printed it off. And I'm just gonna read something here that he said, uh, really important guys for Colorado people. Uh, the governor's office issued a press release explaining that short-term Rental properties often hurt affordable housing measures to make it more affordable to live in the state. The governor said that all residential properties should be only for the people who work in Colorado and provide much needed services. And uh, what's going on here is the governor told a reporter from TMC during the conference that he could care less about people losing their investments and that they could always sell their homes to a teacher, a firefighter, or a police officer in the community. He said that his affordable housing initiative would work better if there was no residential housing being rented for STRs, short-term rentals is what that is, in the state. And so this is what's going on now, people. Uh, it's a lot of uh, laws being changed, and, and this is something going to hurt a lot of people who are... Uh, you know, who ha can't rent, can't buy a place. Uh, they have to go to a hotels now, and hotels are very expensive. Uh, if you're traveling through Colorado, you know, short term or anything like that, you can't rent a room out in your house. You can't uh, be a part of those anymore. They say the ban is effective starting April 1st today, uh, 2023, and his new law imposes criminal penalties of people using their properties for any type of short-term rental. Those who try to continue to let people rent their basements, their rooms, or houses could face a $10,000 fine and up to a year in state prison under the new executive order. This is what's going on. So if you want to uh, see this in the description box, you can go uh, read the whole article here at the publisher's website. I like, copied off here. Uh, company, I never heard of this company really. Uh, it's called um, Mountain Jackpot, Colorado Mountain Jackpot, the Mountain Jackpot News. Yeah, I never heard of that. So anyway, I just thought I would share that with people who listen to my channel. A lot of my 
subscribers are in Colorado. So uh, I hope you guys are really understanding the times we're living in. Things are changing every day. Every day is a new a new, a new law coming out or something. So uh, let me get started here and going over here now to some other news. I know Lewis had some other news. So let me go ahead and mute out again. All right. God bless every single one of you. Today is April 1st, 2023, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. All right, guys, so we have some breaking news updates, some huge information coming out. 36,000 strong NY police on high alert and ready. Once again, 36,000 on high alert. That's an army. That's an army. 30 six thousand and the reason why they are uh told to be ready and put on high alert is because tuesday uh the four or five is going to surrender himself uh possibly mug shots and fingerprints and so many other things uh i heard that he's not going to be cuffed i don't know if that's true guys but we just gotta wait uh this coming tuesday all i know is that uh Tuesday is going to be one of the biggest events. All right. So we need to pray for a lot of people out there. We need to pray for the four or five. Once again, 36,000. I mean, it's insane. Insane. Wow. 36,000. That's an army. But again, guys, we're going to see what's going to happen Tuesday. But this here, this is breaking news updates. And we're going to see what's going on in this one. Now, before I start, guys, give report today today is march 31st 2023 4 30 p.m central here in the u.s god bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world please subscribe give us a thumbs up ring that bell for critical future updates ladies and gentlemen two weeks ago we had the largest outflow of deposits from small banks around the country and the inflow went into larger banks exactly what i didn't want to happen well, finally, it looks like that trend is reversed. We had the biggest outflow from deposits of the top 20 banks in America, the largest 20 banks in America, all part of the Federal Reserve, one way or another, ever in history last week, one week's period, the largest outflow of deposits. Now, what you see here is a chart uh, and the red line is going to be smaller banks. Everyone pulled their money when SVB and Signature Bank went under and UBS got sold and put it, uh, some of it, most of them put it in their mattress, as you can see by the numbers. Good for you guys, or bought some silver or gold. But some of them put it into, into these large banks. Although the trend was already to take it out, or people have been forced to use their savings. These are savings deposits usually over the last, well, year and a half to a year period. So that's probably what this represents. Now these moves here, that's the failure of SVB and Signature Bank. And that move up there is a re result of all of the money pulled from these smaller regional banks and local banks. And that is what was put back into large banks, i.e. a little bump up. But now we've had the, again, single largest withdrawal week ever in recorded history from big banks, the top 20 banks. And we're talking, well, I'll give you numbers here. Large U.S. banks saw record deposit outflows last week. Small bank outflows stall. You guys are keeping a little bit of money in that account like i told you to one to two months of bills is all you would ever need in there find something else to do with the rest of it and we can see that the smart money i.e the bigger depositors in these bigger banks well they actually took out 129 billion dollars of deposits this week that's right the big banks saw $129 billion in deposits this week withdrawn. And you know they didn't have the money. 
it was probably being used somewhere or quote unquote invested somewhere. Now, small banks only lost a tiny $1.948 billion this week, but they're still withdrawing funds from all the banks around the country. Remember, I warned y'all two, three weeks ago to do the same. Don't be the last one out because you won't get your money. Uh, this is a bank run. It's official. You can see it right here. The big banks are now being affected, and this is happening not nationwide, but worldwide. All of the banks around the world are report, uh, reporting the same type of withdrawals, some of the biggest record-breaking withdrawal weeks in history. Again, go get what little money you have, leave a month or two worth of bills in the bank, and make that extra trip to the bank every month. God bless you and yours. Share and subscribe. Get my serious voice back on. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let me put my serious voice on here. We have a wave coming in going down to Yellowstone. That's what's causing the earthquakes at the volcanoes. The wave is coming in from the northwest. We're looking for this to go up to 4.7 up in Alaska and then going up to 6 total, topping out up in Alaska. I'm so not looking for it to go up to 4.7 Alaska. I'm sorry. We're already at 4.7 up in Alaska. We're looking for that to go up to 6.3. Coming in from the northwest, we're going to see this go up as well. I'm going to issue a warning now for Idaho to be on watch. Central Idaho, 4.7 to 5.0 level. You're already moving at Yellowstone. You're already moving over to the west, over at the volcanoes. You're moving at the LIGO gravity wave sensing station in the nuke sites. You're moving along where the power lines are. There's a wave trapped in here right now between Yellowstone and Washington. In the middle is where it's going to break. And it's going to be the combined total of everything coming in. Next week, we may even go up to 6.0 level activity up in the northwest, up in Washington. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First time, Idaho. Right. Coming in from the northwest in a diagonal line coming out of Oregon, going down into Nevada. Next to our pipeline up on the north side. And then down to the south, next to the uranium there are no uranium mines there. I'm just saying they, they're doing the uranium there. I just know about that from something else that happened. Northern California, 3.2 to 3.5. Right along where the plate boundary comes in off the Juan de Fuca. This is at Eureka. Let me show you the plate boundary there. It's the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Comes in right there, 3.2. That's low. Low in comparison to the rest of the plate, moving on a 6.0 level. I'm hesitant to issue the warning now because it will be next week when this happens, but I think we're going to be seeing 6.0 level plus activity coming into the northwest part of California in the next several, well, in the next week, next several days. So really I would wait for Alaska to go and I would wait for the activity to come down into Idaho before I would issue this warning. But since I'm just taking so long between my updates and I'm so sarcastic and I'm so let down about the way the country's going right now. I really am let down, guys. Come on, man. I expect better out of all y'all. But anyway, Northern California 6.0 plus level activity is going to be coming rolling in here within the next 7 to 10 days. Same size activity that's going around the rest of the planet. I don't know. You shouldn't be shocked by this. It's it's going to be coming in off the Juan de Fuca. You'll see it come in from Alaska if they report the quakes. That's a whole other story. Let's go down along the coast. Let's go through the Bay Area. So Bay Area, to the north, if a 6 hits this coming week, you'll feel it. You'll feel it across the Bay Area. If I'm wrong on location and it hits any further south, it'll hit down by Napa. Now right here, next to Napa, is a volcano you've drilled. You keep drilling. You keep drilling this place. The geysers. The geysers are along right here on the east side of the red line. 
the San Andreas Fault. Right over here. So you got your volcano, you've got your drill points, and you're getting swarmed activity there. But a new swarm has broken out, going even higher. This is down next to the Bay Area along the peninsula. Let's go and take a look and see where this is. Pacifica. San Bruno. I would like to go put the coordinates in and just go see what's there. This is a real-time lookup. Look up. I have not looked this up before. So we're going to go look up the location and see what's there. Might not be anything at any significance at all here. Or there may be something very significant. There's the water tower. There's the police department. But they felt it. What else do we have here? Valmar. Rockaway Beach. Anybody know of anything significant here that we would need to pay attention to when it comes to earthquake activity? What's this place? Ooh. The jail. Now that, that gets really weird. Because we had the earthquake below the jail here in Missouri. Jefferson City. Not too long ago. People said it was just chance. Now we got another one. That's getting weird. Okay. I want, you know, and, and they build these jails and these schools and, and, and the, the track and field and all that good stuff alongside of where there are old forts. Did you guys know about this? Some group of some society or something, they come in and build all this crap on top of these old star forts. We call bastion forts, but they're way bigger than bastion forts. All over the place. We're finding all over the world they're doing it. So I have to look now and just see, are there any here? I'm not going to waste your time now, but now that I know where to look, I think I might have to come in and check. Might have to come in and check. I'm not saying that there's anything there, but when I see a golf course, football fields, a state penitentiary, all built in a sh very, very close area, I would say that maybe the area in between has been sculpted in some way by ancient peoples that there's a reason the government's digging in these spots and building these things there. Just like over on the Cahokia Mounds over here in Missouri or anywhere else where the government comes in and digs it up and builds something on it. Let's go down across the San Andreas Fault where we have all the same sized earthquakes today. And I mean exactly 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6 and nestled in the middle of all of them a 1.7 and a 1.8. In other words, it's all the same sized earthquakes spreading out across the whole San Andreas Fault, going down south of the valley. Where are we going down to? It's down here. Well, we go down into the LA Basin with another 1.6 to 1.7. That sure is a lot of 1.6 and 1.7 going on for one day's time. Now, over to the east is our most recent quake marked in white. That's at our oil pumping operations over in the valley. But what about down to the south? Is there anything down here to the south that we should be aware of? Los Alamos. Oh, ah, nothing there I could recall. I don't recall anything at Los Alamos. Do you guys? Anything? Well, first of all, we've got an oil pumping operation there, but that would be the least of our worries at Los Alamos. You guys know about Los Alamos. If you don't, I'm going to tell you about it. Los Alamos, big part of the nuclear thing going on. And right next to it is Vandenberg Air Force Base, where all around the base is where our pumping operations start for oil and gas, supposedly. But Vandenberg's where we do all our space launches for the military. And Vandenberg is out at the tip of something. Vandenberg is out at the tip of something, which I've shown, and I'm not going to really tell you about, but I will show it on the screen just so you can see a specific shape here on the screen. And out at the very tip of it is Vandenberg Air Force Base, where we do all our space launches from. All right, now, earthquakes at the tip of that and earthquakes coming down the San Andreas. Wonder why there's a wave going down the San Andreas. Right now it's small, 
equal to 1.6 to 1.7. It's going to reflect back into itself. When it reflects back into itself, we'll see our earthquake break back up here to the north, the 6. Now, by the end of this coming week as well, we should see a new near 5 strike back down here just south of the border or right at the border, San Diego, Mexico, California border region again. Now, we're already swarming at Salton Sea. Salton Sea's forecast for last week, I don't know if that panned out or not, did it? I, I really don't. I, I, I didn't check. I know we got hit, but I, I didn't check the real magnitude on it. What did it come out to, 4.9 or something? It was right down here, again, just south of the border. I kind of stopped paying attention after they start downgrading all this shit. It's warnings for it. No offense. Let's go over across over onto the New Madrid seismic zone. Let's talk about the Midwest and talk about last week's earthquake activity versus what we were looking for. So last week, I flopped on my New Madrid forecast magnitude. I had warned for up to 4.0. Instead, a rare three came rolling through next to the Indian mound. I was over a magnitude off, but it hit next to the Indian mound that I brought up. I brought up the dang Indian Mound. And then the Indian Mound got hit. My name is Louis, and God bless every single one of you. Today is March 31st, 2023, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. All right, guys, so we have some breaking news updates, some huge information coming out. Mass casualty event declared after a roof collapsed at Apollo Theater during a concert. Now, this happened in Belvedere, Illinois. Now, currently, numerous firefighter and emergency crews are on the scene after a roof collapsed at Apollo Theater during a concert after a powerful storm hit in Belvedere, Illinois. Multiple people are currently trapped, and we need to pray for a lot of them, guys. So let me just play this video. Now, guys, we talked about uh, the storm tornado that... Uh, was impacting in, um, I think, Little Rock, Arkansas, and other areas, too. And we uh, we actually made a video early for people to be prepared and um, just, you know, pray. Uh, a lot of people uh, decided to, uh, again, go to a different path. And it's very important, guys, when it comes to these storms, this is not a joke. So let me just play this video really quick here, guys. Give me one second. Let me just play the video. I believe this is uh, that tornado, uh, the storm that uh, National Weather Service has worn throughout the entire day. Wind gusts, possibly 75 mile per hour, tornado, uh, and others. Again, guys, it's very important to pray for each other in these tough times. Let me see if there's any more information. I do have an article I want to read to you. Um, so it says update. Uh, actually, that's something different. Okay, let's go with the article really quick. Let's go with this one. Give me a second here, guys. There we go. So mass casualty events declare after roof of Apollo Theater collapses in Belvedere, Illinois. 
Please share the video if you can, and please uh, pray for many that were impacted. Reports of multiple casual after the roof of the Apollo Theater collapsed in the city of Bever Beverdeer, Illinois, while a concert was taking place. I don't know why they had a concert going on, knowing that uh, there were uh, uh, multiple uh, emergency. Actually, there was a red flag warning. Give me a second here, guys. Give me one second. That's a very sad situation, guys. But you know, all the judgments are falling, and I don't know, everything can happen, is happening everywhere. I'm going to get on over to my friend Charles Whelan. I'm uh, going to be doing a, like a short intro, and I'm going to hop over to the other video, uh, part two, and play it for 30 minutes, okay? That's why I'm trying to rush through. I want to play this video because he's talking about the San Andre the quakes, and he's talking about Trump, and he's talking about all this stuff. Uh, years back, he, he God showed him all this stuff. Uh, so I want to play it and show you guys a little bit of it. I will put both part one and two. I did one uh, part two myself on another video. Oh, oh man, years ago now, about three or four years back. I don't know, but uh, I will be showing that as well, uh, giving you the links for both part one and two. You have to look at them in the description box. Uh, then we're gonna go to you. Be ready. And then we're going to get in the missions and the Bible, okay, in that order. So let me go ahead and do this right now uh, over here at Charles. Uh, let him do a little short intro. Oh, I can't forget about Nashville. Oh, my goodness. Let me go to Nashville first, guys. I forgot about uh, my friend here uh Nashville. I got to play that. And then I will get into Charles, okay. I just forgot about that. Let me go ahead and do that now from uh, this one ain't but seven minutes, okay. But we got to squeeze him in here, uh, Pastor Dow, because he got some important things I think I agree with that he's saying. So let me go ahead and mute it out. I almost forgot about it. Thank you, Father, Holy Spirit. Uh, let me go ahead and mute it out and get into this and then straight into Charles after this, okay? Let me go ahead. And literally, literally, literally just a tragedy here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm about 70 miles outside of the city of Nashville, and of course, that's what I advise in and everyone to do is get outside of these major population centers. Not only get outside of these major population centers, but take your children out of the private schools, the public schools, and homeschool them. I mean, I say it over and over again. Here in Nashville, Tennessee, yesterday at a private school, we had a woman go in and kill three students and three adults. I mean, senseless, warmthless, for what? You know, we live in a world where people are hyped up, psyched up on dope, psychotropic drugs, psychedelic drugs, or whatever you want to call it, uh, meth, uh, what's that new one that's out there, fentanyl and I mean, everybody's just, I don't know what's going on, but I know one thing, there's a lot of challenges that's going on to the minds today that, that, that seems, I mean, when people are thinking on the wrong things, they give place to the wrong thoughts. And I know that you people out there don't want to hear this, but when you start meditating on the wrong stuff and you keep on dwelling on it, those ministering demonic spirits are going to come in and minister and they're going to keep on preaching and when and while they're preaching and while they're teaching while they're doing all this they're setting it up for you in this realm to fulfill the will of the thief which the thief cometh not but to steal kill and to destroy see a lot of times people don't understand when they see this you know, people killing and stuff. The world is not designed in any way, shape, fashion, or form to be spiritual. <clears throat> sure is the person that was used as a tool of the enemy to destroy, to take life, and to kill. But what really needs to be fingered more than anything is how people are giving place to all of these thoughts, these thoughts and these suggestions that are submitted to the mind and then no telling what else they had because the police actually shot and killed the shooter. But I can't even fathom it. You know, in my day, 
the only time you ever seen a police officer in the school is if that one of their children played sports and they were at the game. That's it. But the, now the thing that as we look at the world is going from bad to worse. But the sit now the thing that you got to have some type of physical police presence in every school. And even at that is still, it's not guaranteed that somebody is not going to go in there and try to take innocent life. And mind you, this happened in the state. And that, can you imagine a woman in Nashville, Tennessee? You don't hear that about women, usually men. But can you imagine Nashville, Tennessee? And can you imagine this is a constitutional carry state? Front KA band. I mean, do they still have ban on school teachers the way they can't carry firearms in the school? I mean, because in Tennessee, man, this is probably one of the best states in the union to have firearms. Listen, let me tell you something. People are polite down here in the South for a reason. You don't want to just go out here and just start walking up on somebody and just challenge them in any kind of way, shape, or form because you may look at something you may think is a soft target. And when that little woman reach into a purse and pull out a Glock 19, you're going to find out that uh, these people, they may look very kind and nice but and simple but let me tell you something uh they ain't no fools by any stretch of imaginations uh these people in tennessee train but it still begs a different or let's say this must be desired something is going on something is not quite right something is extraordinarily wrong when people still got it in their mind that they can go to a mall or go to a school uh, they never go to gun shows. They never go there. And I'm going to tell y'all something. All these big population centers. I mean, just the other day, I came from an event. I think it was called Monster Jams. I'm telling you, man, I... Mm -mm. And I know one thing. I saw myself and quite a few other people that were armed. Uh, yeah. And not only that, we actually called before time and asked, was it okay to be armed? And, and you know, in, in these particular areas. And they said, yes, that was in Kentucky. Because if it wasn't, we wasn't going to go. Uh, I tell you, it's just bad. It's sad. I can only, I can only feel for those, that father and mother, who thinking that their children is safe at school while they're out carving out a living in this, this wicked high inflation um, this this dismal economy that's on life support, they, all because of Joe Biden. Everything gone south. It's it's just utterly appalling to me that these this father and mother they get a call from the school. You got to come and identify your child, and 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 you're you're never gonna see them again. Now you got to go through a funeral, and oh, it's just heart wrenching. Listen. I'm a strong advocate for homeschooling, but I do know lifestyle changes have to be made. And don't tell me, people start belling, well, we got to have two or three incomes. Well, I was a man that in order to have two or three incomes, in order for us to get to a place where we needed to be, yeah, Pastor Dow. And you know what Pastor Dow did, don't you? Pastor Dow went out and worked two or three jobs until I got to a place where I could work one job um, and, and got the debt down and paid off and everything. And most people today, they just think this stuff's supposed to just automatically fall in their lap. They bellyache, they gripe, they murmur, they bawl, they scald, they complain. And then when things go awry, and they don't think that they have to make these hard choices and decisions. Yes, you have to make these hard choices and decisions. You have to learn how to downsize your life. You have to learn how to be inconvenient for a while in order to enjoy um, some form of the pleasures of life. Because you know just as well as I do. Uh, that that life is get is is constantly going from bad to worse in this world that we live in, and it ain't getting any better, and I can't see it getting any better anytime soon. I really truly can't. I hope is my prayer is that man maybe one or two people heard this video that I'm doing right now, and maybe that you consider and do hey move out of these population centers, get out of these cities. Get out of these public food systems. They ain't doing nothing but dumbing down your children to an unprecedented level. 
in order to get them to teach them to learn how to be a good American citizen to function after this particular wicked society. That's just basically what it is. Man, just, just come out. Anyway, hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. It's just sad. It really is sad. Judy was going through the first stages and all of these things that have happened in the last six to eight months. Judy's going through the first stages and I'm home. I'm not spending any time in the office, I'm home. And in between, bring me water, bring me my pill, bring whatever in between, I'm rereading Daniel. And I saw some things that I had never seen before. And you have to understand, I, I, I can pretty well repeat the book from memory. That's nice, that's good. But there are levels of understanding. I'm not going to say interpretation. There are levels of understanding. And I began to see some things that I had never seen before. As many times as I had gone through it, over it, past it, around it, could read it to you, could tell it to you from memory. I'd never saw some of the things that we're going to talk about here today. Once I saw it, instead of having a, a calming effect on my mind, it troubled me. Well, this is one of the things I discovered right here, right here. Now, I'm going to tell you this is not about politics. This is about prophecy. You must understand that President Trump has uh, rewritten the laws regarding uh, someone in my position being able to discuss these things now without fear of the government stepping in and saying, you're a nonprofit. We own you. You can't say that. We're shutting you down. I've got about six weeks of freedom so far. I don't want to talk about politics. I want to talk about prophecy. And I want to put some of these things together in such a way that when I began to see them, I wouldn't voice what everything I was seeing. It, it was almost more than I could handle, much less trying to bounce it off of somebody else. But there was something about uh, Daniel chapter 4 that grabbed me. You're this head of gold. And I had just been reading some of the internet gossip about Trump having his hair dyed. And the rumors are, I don't know how true or not, doesn't matter, but the rumors are in some, on some occasions he had actual gold flakes put into his hair as well. Wow. That may be just fake news. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see if this works. These are the words of Jesus. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. You and I need to get America in the crosshairs. We need to understand that there has never been a nation, there has never been an empire, there has never been a time in human history like this time like this nation. We are the great nation. We are, you are the head of gold. You're the great tree. You are, you are, you are. It began to make, become clear to me that God would not talk about Babylon and Medo-Persia and all of these historical 
nations and people and events in the past and come to the end of time and say nothing about the most powerful nation, the greatest wealth, the greatest, 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 and by the way, the only truly Protestant nation on the planet. And it's not a Protestant nation anymore, but at least we have some, and under this man's tutelage, we're able to say it freely now. No exceptions. I don't need to tell you that this nation is divided. It is divided. It is passionately and violently divided. It is financially, fiscally divided. There are things that are coming across the evening news that just bring tears to my eyes. I'm watching the death of my nation. I'm watching the demise of the most powerful nation and people ever in history. And it is coming apart quickly. And it doesn't matter who says or tries to calm the waters they are just, they're boiling. Every kingdom. Who said this? Come on. How many times did he say it? When something is doubled, that has significance. More so when Jesus is speaking. I'm bringing you to chapter 4 of Daniel and verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. We're going to parse this. We're going to take it apart in a moment. To the intent that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will and sets up over it the basis of men. It was reading that, and it's repeated four times in Daniel 4. It was reading that that I said, that's Donald Trump. If I ever saw or heard, that's Donald Trump. So let's parse this. This matter. What is this matter? First of all, are you aware who wrote Daniel chapter 4? Nebuchadnezzar. Was he a great Christian? Was he a good man? I mean, he's the one that surrounded Jerusalem, tore down the walls, destroyed Solomon's glorious temple, took all the gold back to his house, and made slaves out of a million and a half to two million people. I don't, I don't think of Nebuchadnezzar in pleasant terms. And yet, of all the people, God is going to favor with some knowledge, some understanding of the future. He chooses Nebuchadnezzar. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. This matter is about the green tree, the great tree. And we're going to discover it's about the great tree and the guy who thinks he's gold from head to foot. This matter is by the decree of the watchers. Are you familiar with this term? These are the timekeepers. These are the clock watchers. The guys who came looking for Jesus from the east, they're watchers. We have seen 
we watch the heavens and all the things that we have heard about through our ancestors are taking place. Where is he that is to be born king of the Jews? There's a decree of the watchers. They're not down here like the wise men. They're up there. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand or command by the word of the holy ones. Tell me who's holy. Jesus is Is this plural or singular? Plural. See, we, we read, but we just go too quickly through these things. The demand or command is the command of the holy ones. Follow me. To the intent, this is the purpose, to the intent that the living may know. Why, why, why does it address the living? People living at that time. It's the people living at this time. At this time. To the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Now, we have to back up just a little bit right here. The disciples said, uh, Master, teach us how to pray. In uh, 1980, 81, thereabouts, 81, I asked 12 to 1,500 people come together in Southern California and let's talk about something new and different in the prophecies opening the book of Daniel. 80, 81, might have been early 82. By 83, the word was getting around across oceans and onto other continents, and I was invited to come to Australia. Then you come to Australia, you land in Sydney. Sydney is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And uh, friends who invited me to come over said, uh, it's gonna be a crowd. Matter of fact, probably be the largest crowd we've ever had at the auditorium, the hall where we're going to meet. And so Sabbath morning came and I'm a foreigner, I'm a whatever, and I announced to these people that the book of Daniel is really for our day, and forget about the past. That's not prophecy, that's history. Well, that didn't excite, it incited some Adventist folk, and I, in the presentation that morning in Sydney, and there was standing room only, they were even outside standing. I said, mark this down because I believe it's in the book. The day is coming. The United States and Great Britain are going to go to war with Iraq and Iran. And this is going to mark the beginning of the time of the end. That's where the brother who was extremely well known in the church in Australia, high up official, he shouted out loud for the whole crowd to hear, this man has lost his mind. Okay? Now, I have not stopped in the 20, 30 plus years since that time saying, the key to this is a war that is going to come between the United States and Great Britain and Iraq and Iran. Iran is going to be the provoker. Something Iran is going to do is going to bring the West in with all guns loaded and firing. You listening? The date of this is June 15, 2017. What is the date today? 17. Oh, this is old news. I shouldn't even share it with you. Here's the headline. 
With the U.S. dollar rallying and gold hovering near $1,250, top trends forecaster Gerald Salenti, maybe some of you know who Gerald Salenti is, just warned that this trigger for a global stock market crash will devastate the world. Headline, Iran war coming, World War III market crash. Call it the trigger event. Yeah. June 15, King World News, Gerald Salenti, get ready for the next war. It may be the war to end all wars and much of civilization. This is two days ago. Here's a trigger event. He's not talking Bible prophecy. He's talking Bible prophecy. He's looking at what's going on in the world. I'm looking and I pray you're looking at what's going on in the book. For 30 plus years I've said when this happens, here it is in the book. Here it is in the press. Two days ago, Thank you for bringing this along. Gerald Salenti just warned this trigger for a global stock market crash will devastate the world. Iran war coming, World War III market crash. Okay? Now my position was that this is not going to, the powder keg is not going to, until January 2018, it should say January the 20th, because that was inauguration, and it says 12 months. It's very precise. It's very exact. And after 12 months, he was walking in the palace and sat in the people's house and said, this is my great doing. And the watcher and the holy one in heaven says, that's it. Bring it down. Cut the tree down. Strip it of its leaves, branches, fruit. Let the beasts get away. Let the birds flee. Let the other nations get away, and they will. They want nothing to do with us when we don't have money, when we can't buy their stuff. Now, you and I are about to inherit and pay the price for the sins of our fathers. And I include politicians. I include people who go and buy Halloween suits. You understand? I include Adventists. We have gone too far, too long since 1844 to get excited. We don't want to get excited again because it didn't pay, it doesn't pay, it won't pay. That's when stuff happens. Okay? When everybody says it can't happen, it won't happen, it... Now that's of concern to me because I have been praying. I have been praying for five going on six years. Lord, I have the marching orders that you gave to me in person in 1978 in Gentry, Arkansas. This is what you said you wanted done. I said, if you will pay the bills, I'll go help get it done. He has paid the bills. But this time, we are to scatter to every kindred, tongue, nation, and people. How are we going to do it? Lord, I need $350 million. Have you ever prayed for $350 million? Well, I decided I need more than that. If the money comes, I shouldn't say if, when the money comes, and it will, it's on the way. And it's all part of this global currency reset. So you need to understand this. I'm not going to burden you too long. A lot of Adventists don't even know this. It's clear in the book of Revelation that there's beast number one. You'll find beast number one in Daniel chapter 7. You'll find beast number two In Revelation chapter 13, this first one appears, I'm quoting scripture, appears to be slain unto death. I saw this beast and one of his heads was slain unto death. He's gone. This is the new world order. This is the one that is maybe days from being introduced to the world. Not as an ugly beast 
as the thing we've all been waiting for and looking for. And the markets are going to soar and money is going to flow and happy days are here again. That's the new world order. This one is the one world order. This beast is going to be not resurrected, but is going to be copied. We're going to make an image to the first beast whose deadly wound was, is. We're going to make an image to the first beast. Well, what's the difference between the two? The new world order is predicated on the nations coming together and working out a plan. Okay? This plan is going to appear to work. It has to be backed. It has to be asset backed. It has to have real something behind it. I could go into five hours now with what they're putting behind this from every corner of the planet. Don't need to go into all of that. But they're trying to use real gold, real oil, real assets to back this. The problem is, how many countries on the planet have billions of dollars worth of gold in the ground or in the bank? There's very few. We're, we're talking about 200 plus nations. Where are they going to get asset backed currency? So you have to invent a scheme, a shell game. You're going to pull oil out of the ground. You're going to print currency. We're going to take your currency, which is good because you've got assets to back it up, and we're going to put your money in our bank, and we're going to say we're asset-backed because we've got your currency. It's a scheme. I'm not rich. you got the money, but i got your money in my bank. That makes me rich, okay? Now, what's going to happen here is that this first scheme is going down. It's going to collapse. The New Testament talks about it. Ellen White talks about it. The prof prophetic writings talk about it. This is going, to da going down. A surprise. Uh, how does Ellen White? Uh, the overwhelming surprise. The overwhelming, the sudden and unlooked for calamity. This is going to be sudden, almost instantaneous and it's going down. Then there will be two to, I'm just telling you what my assessment is. I have the right to be wrong. It's going to be two to three years in the which things are trying to heal. Trying to heal. And here comes disaster. I mean, the calamity of all. This is provoked by a flyby in the heavens. This is the one that is going to shake the timbers worldwide. My only question is, is this the one that takes California and the West Coast down, or is this the one? It doesn't matter. Both are coming down. Now, Right here, you have the answers to the greatest puzzles of the Sabbath in the Bible. Are you listening? The three angels' messages in Revelation 14 are introduced with, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His what is come. Yes, it actually says crisis. It's a crisis. It's a crisis for who? For God. This is his crisis. Well, what is his, how can God have a crisis? Well, the crisis is he's about to shut down business in the sanctuary. And the children that don't make it through the door before it is shut are gone how long? Forever. And not only are they gone before this whole thing is cleaned up, they're going to have to burn. I would use unkindly words like sizzle and fry. But I wouldn't do that. And God, who loves all his children equally, is going to have the pain 
and the anguish of not only watching his children <coughs> burn, but he is going to hear every lament and cry, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, take me back. It is no accident that the three angels' messages in Revelation are introduced with the Sabbath issue. The first angel's message is the portion of the fourth commandment that says, fear God, give glory to him, and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Come on, this is the fourth commandment. It's, it's word for word out of the fourth commandment. Now, why is this necessary? You have to go back to Old Testament scripture to understand what's going on. And those of you who are moved messianically, you, you forgive me. But the Sabbath issue has never made sense. Never. Not when you back away and see that when God was bringing his own people out of Egypt, they had been four to five hundred years in darkness and ignorance. They didn't even know who Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were, much less the Sabbath. They had not kept the Sabbath for hundreds of years. We have no record that Abraham kept the Sabbath. Are you listening? Oh, well, you don't believe in the Sabbath. Come on, get off of it. We are in ignorance down here on this rock. What is about to happen according to this book is that business is going to be shut down for how many people? Everybody on the rock. And Jesus said it cannot happen. We will not, heaven will not allow the door to close until every kindred tongue, nation, and people hears the call, the appeal, the last warning, come out. The Sabbath is suddenly going to become a key issue at the end. Ellen White calls it a testing truth for the last days. How, how does it become an issue? Because the world is going to set up a centralized government. The papacy is at the head of the one world, new world, old world order. And the papacy says, we have decided which day will be the Sabbath. And all of that is going to change with this flyby. We're going to move from 365 and a quarter days back to a calendar of 360 days per year. How do I know it? Because in the Exodus, it was 360 days. In the days of Daniel, it was 365. But he was shown the time of the end, and it will be 360. And God said through Daniel to Nebuchadnezzar, God has shown the king that he is going to change the Moed, the times and the seasons in the latter days. God is going to reset the clock. Why? So prophecy can be filled full to the T. And when the calendar is changed overhead, the world governments and the world religions are going to have to come to grips with this. Who has the right to change the calendar? Oh, I, I, I don't know who has the right to change the calendar. The same people that give us the calendar we all observe today. The Sabbath is going to become a universal issue. And it's hard-headed, stiff-necked people like Adventists who are going to make it an issue. You have to understand, we are going to become the off-scouring of the earth. Those are not my words. We are going to become dirt on the soles of their feet. You sure you want to do this? Hello everyone. Welcome to this channel. Today is September 24th, 2022. The Lord titled this word, 5783, Year of Turmoil, and the scripture he gave me is Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. 
and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And this is the word. My son, hear my shout. Wake up, for my body is comatose and lifeless. Wake up, for this year, 5783, will be a year of great turmoil. Many in my body will be confused as they see the events unfold. I tell you now, many are not braced, and many are not prepared, and many will fall away. As war is moving closer to claim its spoils, my people continue in a haze, not seeing the writing on the wall. I say to you who doubt my words, repent now. My son, 5783 is the year of commitments. As my hand moves across my people, many will not commit to my will, but instead commit the walk in the flesh and trust a man to save them. The year 5783 will bring great turmoil unto those who do not walk by faith and keep their eyes on the natural. I will not be able to move in the lives of those with no faith. My son, here I am, waiting to move among my children, yet they do not want to move. They do not want to give up the things of this world and follow me. Thus saith the Lord, I will take away that which my children place above me. 5783 will be a year of great darkness and much stress. Times of war will be everywhere with much blood filling the land. Times of persecution on my body will increase as my children will be blamed for all the turmoil and carnage. My children, keep your eyes steadfast on me. Repent daily and keep my temple clean and clear of sin. Keep me in your thoughts and look not on the situations of the world. Keep me first in all things, and I will add unto you the fruits of my spirit. My son, shout repent to the dead church. Shout repent to the comatose body. Shout repent, for 5783 is a year of turmoil. I love you, my remnant, standing strong and holy. I am coming soon. Amen. Love Jesus.
Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. This video has been going too fast today, guys. I had another video to show, but I have to show it on another time. But uh, we're going to get into the Bible real quick. I'm glad it's not too many pages there. But uh, we're going to get on over here to the Bible and Isaiah 55. Uh, I love the two children, uh, Eden. Uh, it takes a very special work to do missionary work and work with children and all these things. We really appreciate all our missionaries. Uh, really continue to support them and pray for them. Uh, Feed My Sheep Today, uh, End Time Dream and Vision, Fill My Cup Ministries. Uh, all these ministries work together to help a lot of people. Uh, so we just thank you guys for uh, being here today. Uh, we're going to get into... Uh, the Bible right now, uh, the living word, the living word. I tell you, I'm so happy. I know the commandments and know the Bible and learning more every day. The church is really uh, getting into a lot of serious situations all over the world. Uh, you know, we're having troubles and sorrows and problems. But we need to know, all the, with all the tensions going around, uh, we need to know Yeshua is coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. And we need to be getting ready. So, Father, be with us as we uh, go to your wonderful message coming from Isaiah 55. Uh, we know that you're an awesome God. Indeed, you are. Uh, people will just believe and just believe and receive you where they can have eternal life. So I'm going to go ahead and say let your Holy Spirit come be with us now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. So go ahead and you can read that scripture, powerful scripture. <clears throat> Isaiah 55, we'll start in verse 1. Come, everyone who is thirsty, come to the water, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Mm -hmm. Why do you weigh out hack silver for what is not bread? And why do you labor for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in fatness. Turn your ears and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My reliable, faithful love promised to David. Look, I have placed him as a witness to the ethnicities, as a leader and commander to the people. Look, you will call to an ethnicity that you did not know, and an ethnicity that did not know you will run to you because of Yahweh, your divine one, the set-apart one of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call on him while he is nearby. Let the wicked leave his path and the man of sin his thoughts. Let him return to Yahuwah and he will pity him, and to our Divine One, who will abundantly forgive him. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares Yahuwah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, unless they saturate the earth, and make it produce and sprout, and give seed to the farmer who sows, and bread to the eater. So also my word will be what goes from my mouth. It will not return to me useless, but it will accomplish that which I wish, and it will succeed in that for which I sent it. For, whoa, went too far. <laughs> for you will go out in joy and be led along peacefully. The mountains and the hills will break out in joyful shouts before you. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bushes, the cypress will grow. And instead of the briar, the myrtle tree will grow. And it will be for Yahuwah, for his name, as an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. Absolutely, guys. It's time to really know who your father is. Know him, know him, worship him, find him, talk to him. Oh, my goodness. My testimony this week alone, it just really keeps me... Uh, very uh, appreciative of my father. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go on over here real quick, guys. Time is really running out. I'm looking for my Maranatha site. Uh, right there. Right. Is that it right there? there. Yeah, right here. Oh, uh, this is really funny. I, I have to say this real quick because I know time is going. Uh, but I was talking last night as I go to bed every night, asking for the father what he had to give me to read. And I have to share it with you because it's like a real 
funny thing. You see on the on this book, he had me to go turn the page. I said 78. No, not 78. Page 7 and 8, he told me. And page 7 is talking about the new year. And I say, oh my goodness, it is. It is a Hebrew new year. And we just uh, know last week we was talking about the Hebrew new year. And so, you know, we go by the Gregorian calendar. And that's not the one Yeshua is talking about. He told me, happy new year, Marner. Happy new year. So I'm going to go ahead and read this message real quickly uh, to give you guys. You just have to bear with me. It's probably another uh, hour and 50 minute video again. But anyway, uh, he said, happy new year. And it's so it says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts into wisdom. Psalm 90, 12. Another year of life is now in the past. A new year is opening before us. What will be its record? What will we each inscribe upon its spotless pages? The manner in which we spend each passing day will decide this question. Let us enter upon the new year with our hearts cleansed from the defilement of selfishness and pride let us put away every sin sinful indulgence and seek to become faithful diligent learners in the school of christ a new year opens its unsullied pages before us what shall we write upon them seek to begin this year with right purposes and pure motives as beings who are accountable to God, every bear in mind that your acts are daily passing into history by the pen of the recording angel. Angels are so important, guys. You must meet them again when the judgment shall sit and the book shall be open. If we connect with God, the source of peace and light and truth, his spirit will flow through us as a channel to refresh and bless all around us. This may be the last year. Ain't that important? This may be the last year of life to us. And I was thinking about how I could have died. I told you guys about my testimony. I, the pain was so horrible. Never had pain like that in my life. And Yeshua healed me. So he, it's true. This may be the last year of, your, of life to us. Shall we not enter upon it with thoughtful consideration? Shall not sincerity, respect, benevolence, mark our deportment towards all let us withhold nothing from him withhold nothing from him guys learn to be poking his tugging on him you know learn that he is your god he is your father let us withhold nothing from him who gave his precious life for us let us all consecrate to god the property he has entrusted to us above all let us give him ourselves a free will offering may the beginning of this year be a time that shall never be forgotten a time when christ shall come in among us and say peace be unto you john 20 19 brothers and sisters i will wish you one and all a happy new year we live in deeds not years and thoughts not breaths and feelings not in figures on a dial we should count time by heart throbs he most lives who thinks most feels the noblest acts the best oh my goodness hallelujah hallelujah what a wonderful god we serve i'm going to go ahead and close out now guys uh it's just so important that we know that yeshua is a living god a living god waiting on you guys to repent and come to him while the time is before you while you're still living to do it so we're gonna say uh we had a wonderful day here today uh let's go ahead and close out now uh please download jeans free epub bible uh read the son of man bible for free download the son of man bible for free download free at biblesupport.com and wordmodulars.com uh, thank you for all your offerings, all your prayers to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need in mission fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you. Uh, FMI, FMCMI, alternative channels of Rumble, uh, BitChute, Facebook, FMCMI.org. Uh, also, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, donate by Cash App. Uh, also, other donation options, fmcmi.org, marna.camber at gmail.com. Uh, uh, also, you write a mail-in donation, Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. 
8215. Uh, shipping address is Fill My Cup Ministry, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Uh, click subscribe to the like bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the like button, click the notification bell. Our digital business card in front of you. Uh, most son of man Bible links and also our hashtags. So I thank you guys for being here. We're gonna go ahead and go. The videos that are hour 47 minutes. Please go and watch uh Charles Whelan uh messages from part one, part two. I couldn't get into all of it, it's too much to cover, but guys, he's talking about Trump, he's talking about the stuff going on right now before us. I don't think he realized it was about in 2020. 2023 but you know that's okay he got it the dates ain't quite right but i tell you the time is really right so please go and listen to his videos you'll get a lot out of those videos uh, and i'm gonna go ahead and close out now uh with prayer uh you feel like praying mm -hmm. <laughs> okay let's go ahead and close out with prayer right now it's uh we know it's man it's exciting days exciting exciting times ahead exciting times guys <laughs> Father, do we thank you for everyone that gets to view the video. We thank you for everyone that supports in prayer and in, in giving. And Father, mm -hmm. everyone that obeys you and follows you and does your will, Father, yes, yes. not our will. Your will be done, Father. We just we offer ourselves on the altar. That's mm -hmm. what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Follow you, Father. We we look forward to this uh, holiday week coming up, the Holy Week coming up, mm -hmm. the. Passover and unleavened bread, Father. Yes. What a wonderful feast time. We look forward to meeting with you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. I love you so much. I'm going to go ahead and just close out. And I just want to say Shabbat Shalom. I know uh, a lot of people have ended Sabbath right now, but please keep my Sabbath set apart and they will be a sign between me and you so you will know that I am you, Yahweh, your Elohim. Uh, Ezekiel 2020. So I'm going to just say Shabbat Shalom. I love you guys so much. We'll see you on another video. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.